dust collection is an important part of a CNC setup, but it turned out to be way more important than I first thought when I got my first CNC, and in a way I didn't quite expect. Today I'll go through what I've learned about dust collection for CNC, and how I ended up with the setup I have now, and hopefully you can learn something from my mistakes. Full disclosure, I'm just a hobby CNC enthusiast, I'm still learning, and if your experiences are different than mine, please share them in the comments. Let's start with the obvious. When cutting or engraving on the CNC, especially on wood, chips and dust fly everywhere. Small engravings make small messes, bigger carvings and reliefs create huge ones. All those chips dirty up your shop quickly if you don't have the right setup, but the mess is only part of the problem. When I started out, I only did small engravings, like putting my logo on wood turning pieces. I didn't see a need for a dust collection system back then. But even with those small jobs, I noticed a layer of fine dust gathering on the machine and around the shop, and that was my first hint of a much bigger problem than just the chips making a mess. The CNC is a precision machine, moving a spinning bit across the X, Y and Z axis, and for something that relies on movement down to a tenth of a millimeter, dust buildup is a major threat. On my first entry-level CNC, those moving parts weren't even that well protected, so dust easily got inside bearings and rails. When I upgraded to a larger, more robust CNC, I had to rethink that. The new machine was built better, with more shielding and enclosed movement, but it was also bigger, more powerful and producing a lot more dust as I took on bigger projects. So I attached my shop vacuum directly on the spindle motor. It worked, it cleared the dust and chips with no problem, and for a while I thought that was the final solution. It wasn't. And that leads us to the real problem I had. Using a regular shop vacuum for CNC dust collection may sound good, getting the job done while utilizing the machines you already have, but it's really not a good idea. First, the noise. My shop vacuum is loud, like annoyingly loud. Hours of that hum can make you lose your mind really fast. Second, heat. Shop vacuums aren't built to run for hours continuously. Mine overheated several times and I had to turn it off mid-job, and that strain on the machine can honestly be really dangerous, a serious fire hazard. And third, power draw. My vacuum pulls 2000 watts with no way to adjust the suction. Run that for long jobs every day and it'll show up on your power bill for sure. So yeah, it's powerful but not sustainable, and it's simply just not safe for long CNC sessions. So when two trees offered to send me their M2 CNC dust collection system, of course I said yes but reading the specifications on the machine made me a bit skeptical. I'm very happy with my other Two Trees products, so I will give it a try anyway. This is the Two Trees M2 CNC vacuum, which sells for around $350. If I can get a discount code before posting this video, I'll link it in the description. On their website, they call it the Vacuum Cleaner Monster, but thankfully, the price isn't too scary. It's got a full metal body with the vacuum motor on top and a collector tray below. No bags, just a large removable tray you slide out like a drawer. That's the first thing that worried me. It's only sealed by two latches, and I wasn't sure it would be enough for a good seal. We'll see how it does when I start it up. The machine runs at around 65 decibels, and has adjustable suction power and a small footprint, about 0.3 square meters. Definitely more compact than my shop vacuum. All in all, a good looking machine at a reasonable price, if it performs as promised. One big upgrade over my old setup is the spindle interface. It focuses the suction directly where it's needed, so the system needs much less power to do the same job. There's also a brush attachment that concentrates suction even more, but it does make it harder to see what's going on. It's got built-in lights, but with the brush on, they're pretty much useless. Everything connected, time to power it up. And this is where I got really skeptical. The noise level was great, almost too great. It was so quiet, I thought it wasn't working properly. I checked the sound level to confirm my suspicions, but the sound level is where it's supposed to be. Actually, a bit lower than advertised at full power, at about 63 decibels. But I did expect more suction. I double checked all the seals, especially the tray, which I thought might be leaking. Turns out, that was no issue at all. There's so much suction that it actually pulls the tray tight against the seals. So, no leaks. But still, even at max, it didn't feel as strong as my shop vacuum. Then I looked closer at the specs. This thing only draws 240 watts, compared to my 2000 watt shelf vacuum, and I guess that explains the difference. Once I confirmed that everything is working as it should, I ran a test. To my surprise, it actually works. It clears dust effortlessly and even handles most of the larger chips. It does struggle a little with the very big ones getting up the hose, but overall it performs way better than I expected. And that's when I realized something important. What you need in a CNC dust collector is not brute force, it's efficiency. 
Because of the focus suction from the spindle interface, you don't need 2000 watts of noise and heat. You just need steady, continuous airflow, quietly and safely, for hours at a time. And that's exactly what this machine does. Now I get it. Dust collection isn't about keeping things clean. It's about protecting your machine, your lungs and your sanity. I hope my little dust collection journey helps you avoid a few of my mistakes. If you got a different setup or something smarter, let me know in the comments. I'd love to hear it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.